So guys, this is Jeff again. The um, my older, I'm gonna turn it around. Her, it's a 2003. It's a nice motorhome. Okay, it has a few of the lamination spots. So I got it. But um, it had the old Atwood six gallon water heater. I guess you could call it that. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't very good, rusty. So I did this. I put this nice door on here, and I noticed. Oh, it's a lot wider here that's how the original atwoods are and the one i have in my other one i'll show you tomorrow i'll show you when i get to it tomorrow is actually this size right here to here it's like 12 inches this is 12 inches so it's actually perfect so i don't have to, don't have to mount but mount this two by four in here and this actually cover hides that hole so uh that's something you have to do if you have the older atwood as far as this style, also the Atwood ones has a hose, the, your copper hose comes up front for your gas and everything. This looks like everything's in the back, which is going to be so much easier to do. So I'll show you tomorrow, and um, I just wanted to show you what it's like on an older hurricane so you don't have to take a useless shower for five minutes or four minutes and have the water run out. So I'll let you know, see you tomorrow. Hey you guys, this is Jeff and this is Anthony. And we're over here working on my Whitehawk. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Uh, I showed you the other one on my first of my video, uh, my older video, my older uh, RV. And this one here, I'm going to turn the camera around. This is my brand new 2021 Jayco Whitehawk. It's a beautiful RV. I mean, it's just like a Macklin. I had a bad issue with uh, Jayco a long time ago, but this one is absolutely impressive with these, uh, with the pullouts, with these new gears and everything. But the only thing that I don't like, I mean, I'm talking about the only thing that I can't stand is the fact that they took and they put this little small, um, a little, little six gallon uh, um, tank thing, uh, this water heater. And the problem is, is I like my showers. I like 15 minute, sometimes longer shower. I have back issues. So I like the fact that Sometimes I can uh, just you know let run and it's therapeutic, but um, some people like short showers. That's fine, but also this puts off lower water pressure. So uh, this is a suburban. This is actually smaller than most of your water heaters. They fit it in this 12-inch space here, and my my water heater we just got is where's my box at? I'm gonna show you. It's right here, and just give them a plug. This is from PPL. Um, motorhomes and they're uh, I think they're down in Texas and they're awesome it's the second one I've got this model is is the uh, Gerard 2 it's a model GSWH-2 as you can see right here and um, I'm gonna open up the box and we'll be right back with you one second okay so we're gonna show you what's in the box you open it up and there's really cool instruction now they say a professional installation is very is strongly recommended I've done this before I'm not a big problem so we're gonna take off little cover and show you what's inside. Go ahead and lift it out of there carefully. It's the first time Anthony's done a video with me, so we'll get out here just one second here. Okay, so now we're getting it out of the box here. And this is what, okay. So we have our fan over here. It's very humid today. So if you hear that in the background, you're gonna know what's going on. Now, that's our control box. It's gonna go inside the RV. We'll show you that in a minute. Put that over there. And we're gonna open up the package here show you what's inside and as you can see this compared to that it fits in the same exact slot the only difference is is I'm gonna show you we're gonna flip it around on the back side and I'm gonna show you where you get the um, your gas and everything okay right here so basically you're gonna take the other one and you're gonna pull we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna put our hot water here which is uh, the copper wire and we're gonna have our um, the cold water going here this actually this is coming yeah this is going out and then we have the uh, LP gas goes here I'm sorry I had it backwards and these are the little black ones here black yeah let's see it's two, two of one my other one had two okay this is your uh, power wires that goes to that little control box okay and then this is your uh, a 110 uh, power wire and this should be my other no, that's not it. Oh, they might have these backwards. This is actually the blue ones are actually going to the control, and this one is the other power. Okay, so we're getting it figured out. So, um, 
We're gonna get with you here. We'll be back to you shortly here. I'll show you some more. So you guys, you wanna make sure you turn off your propane, which our tanks on this one is the one that's on. Okay, we're gonna turn off the tank so we have no gas at all, just in case, go and just leave that off. Okay, and we turned off our water, which is very, very important. You don't wanna have water squirting all over the place. So you have to remove these three screws, one there, one there, and there's one right here on the very top, which he's gonna get right now. And we're gonna take this outer cover off. It's sealed, it's got a lot of sealer in here, you can see right here. So you gotta kinda of clean that up. And I don't think we'll have to use that on the next one because it's already got a sealer built in on the door. So you can see this is like a silicone right here that's, that they sealed this with. So it's really easy to put back on if you need to. I don't think we need to do it on the next one, but I'm just showing you how, e how easy it is to move it. We're working on it here. I want to show you how they used to have this little uh, gummy tape on the back. And you'll see you'll need to just work that tape off there. Being careful not to, yeah, you can see how it's coming loose slowly. And we'll pry it off. Okay, guys, we finally got this thing breaking loose. We got that gray tape inside and it's kind of double stick. And we finally had to scrape off all that silicone. Now we're getting it loose. We're popping this cover. There we go. Now we got the cover off. You can see all the gook and the double stick tape on the inside. And that, they, they make it hold pretty good. And you can see in here how we have the rest of the tape right here on the casing right here and and so down here so we want to get the rest of the silicone out of here because that's really easy to put back in so we're going to scrape that off and we'll be right back to you and start pulling the unit out okay guys so we have one screw here and one screw up here and they just look like they just randomly put them in there with a self-tapping screw so philip so we're going to do that and this whole unit should come back so we're going to work on that in one sec Okay, so Anthony's taking the second screw out now. Real simple to do, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this unit will pop out of here a little bit. So bear with us, we haven't done this one before. Don't, don't grab the pipes so. though. Yeah, grab on there. And we're, we're figuring out how to get this out and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're using a um, blade to go down the sides, go on the other side over there too to clear out that sticky emits all in here. They really glue the hell out of this stuff when they put it on here. There we go, we got a little section they want to raise. We can sometimes use a little straight edge razor blade like that too. You get the bottom good. We're clearing this all out of here. It seems that, yeah, I broke it loose real good. Now let's see if this unit pulls back a little bit. Just, just grab the edges as much as you can. Try to pull it out a little bit. Okay, let's try it, okay. So we're starting to break this loose. It's in there pretty good. Oh, okay, it's coming out. Now you see, yeah, you can pull it now. Okay, so now we're able to pull it out, the unit out from the back so we can get to the to the uh, cables. So now it's unit will come right out of there somehow. It's in there pretty good. It's got to wig a little bit. Let's see a screwdriver. Okay, just kind of pull straight out. You got to pull out as straight as possible. So there's wires and stuff all around there. This is how they get it in. Now we may have to go in the back and disconnect the uh, stuff in the back, maybe. So we're gonna walk around the inside and undo the cabinet a little bit and uh, get to all our backside. So don't pull anymore. Okay, so guys, here's my refrigerator and here's the access panel. You'll see one here and one here. And so we're gonna take the four screws off the top. He's gonna go ahead and do what Anthony is. And this gets us to the access to the back which also has the power and everything behind it. We're gonna put our control panel right there. So we're gonna do the other side. We're we'll right back to you in a minute. Okay, okay so we're pulled one off. And you can see my other heater unit there. And versus the other ones, and this gives us access to the bottom for our, a, for our um, gas unit. And this is all the secret stuff they hide from you. This should give us access to the back. You pull them out of the way and you'll see. There's your, your water heater right there and there's your connections right there. You can see them right in the back. And we're gonna get that pull out the front, but first we gotta disconnect it from the back. So bear with us just a minute. So you wanna make sure you write down your colors of the wire, which wire goes to which. Like you have red over in here, you'll see red going to orange, different colors. 
that way you have a reference on you see there's a tag on the side of the tank where I'm pointing at they'll tell you the configuration so you'll be able to match them back up when you put the other tank in in here you're gonna see there's a water spigot right there you need to make sure you turn those sideways so they're turned off even though we went and turned the water off you still have water in your lines you don't want to get water all over the place inside so now we're going to disconnect the I think the bottom is which, which one? The, the bottom is the cold. Bottom one's a cold going in, and then the top one's your hot, which is going to be going out. They still can have water in that tank, so be very careful that water doesn't come flying out. If it does, go back on there. Yeah, these units are a little tight getting them out, but you got to work them out. They got a big foam padding around the tank. Just kind of got to work it out. It will come out. We disconnected the cold line on the back and cut the wires but we got the hot line because when you let the hot line go it drains water all over the place so we're trying to get it out so just hold on so one thing we got to show you is this is your gas line that comes in on the front the other one's in the back so you got to release your gas line but that won't allow you to get out otherwise so they got silicone in here you have to scrape it out just to show you so but we got this line it's actually the correct thread some of the gas lines are backwards this is actually the right way so we're going to clean this out and we'll get right back to you in a minute okay so now we got this unit coming out go ahead and see if we can get out the rest of the way we had to pull this gas line off the side um yeah you know nasty silicone they got on here they didn't want you to get it off of here this is the other piece that came off the uh seal anyway so we're getting it out now very hard to get out you got to rock it evenly out Otherwise, it will not come out for nothing. We're trying to get to the hot water line behind there. So, I couldn't pull the gas line out anymore, so it's just got to stay there. How the hell they get these in here, I have no idea. We're not going to put it back in. <laughs> so, here it comes. Now, hold on a minute. Here, we got an electrical wire okay, or something you, here. You guys, we pulled this out, and you can see on the other side of these, we, there's a little box here. you got to be careful. That box is part of the unit that comes with this. And you can see there's your gas line going out the back and you see your wire line. Now we still have the cold water on the bottom down here already off. But if you take this one off, it's going to take water all over the place. So we have to disconnect it out here and have a bucket. So we'll be back with you so in a minute. We're trying to get the water out of here. So we had a bucket. We brought it out. Had a few little water come out of it still. It's hard to get the water all the way out of those We tanks, found that sir. the orange wire is our power wire off our unit. And the white wire is our ground. And the other two wires are also grounds, these two. So we don't need those, we taped them off. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip these two wires right here. There we go, strip those off, maybe a little smaller than that. Okay, then we're gonna put those in butt connectors. And those are gonna to connect to the back end of our water heater, probably from the inside when we go back in there. But we're gonna do them, start them right here, it's much easier to do. about ready to slide our unit back in here pretty quick. Connecting those down there a couple times good so we don't have them ever come off. Yep. And we're going to do the other one. Okay, now we're putting the screws on the outside. Threading them in. We go drywall screws. Let me get over here. See, don't forget when you do this, there's an on, there's an on button. I'll start to you in a second. Point to the on button. Don't forget to turn your on switch on because otherwise you'll go, it don't work. And there's an on switch right here on this unit. So don't our control box. These two wires go to the two blue wires. What I did is I drill a little hole here. I'm shoving these down inside the hole down to the, so we get to them on the bottom. There's a little clip on the bottom. So we're gonna pull these down. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna mount my little control box right here and it snaps back together so it's pretty easy. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right here. And you can put it depending on where you want it. At the other one I ran a wire up into a cabinet, so you can kind of do wherever you want. Hopefully you have enough room in here to Got this mounted on the wall like this. 
inside of here. So these are just going to snap right up in here like this. Then the outer cover, this goes on like this. And then you got little screws right here, little tiny mini little screws. They have to connect this all back together. You got to put them on right here. Okay, we got all the screws. We're tightening them down now. Make sure they're nice and snug. Power box is relatively pretty easy to do. Okay, then we're going to take that cover right there and it just snaps right on there. It's got four little spots on the side and there's our power box all done. So, okay. Okay, guys, we're getting close to done here. We're just doing our two wires that go on our little controller right over here. And the whole unit is in there except for the cover on the front. So I'll show you in a little bit. We'll mount it all on there and close it up. But right now we gotta do all the technical stuff and make sure everything works. Tape it up for some security. So yeah, you see we got our little water gauge right here. And I'm gonna run over here and turn on my water, my faucet. Now watch what happens. It starts building up the temperature. You see, watch it. 92, 97, 102. That fast, it heats your water up on demand. No waste of your uh, propane. I ran my shower a minute ago. My God, if the water is so hot, you run like a half hour and it can time out after a half hour. But usually you're done by then, but you can just turn it off for a minute or so and turn it back on. It fires right back up. Look at that. I would set for 115. If I want to go up to 117. It'll go to 117, it stays there. So I'm getting that kind of water. Oh yeah, it's, ooh, it's hot. Ouch. So yeah, that's how these little tankless water heaters work. They're really cool. So now we're putting our panels back on and then we're gonna go out and close the back out and we're done. Hey guys, we come back another day to finish putting our cover on here, not much to do. So we wanna clean up this, see this residual of where we had the, um, old cover on here. So we're going to take the lacquer thinner with the rag and depend on the surface, make sure it's safe on your surface. This is like a fiberglass on here. So some stuff you may have to scrape it off, but it, it takes off the, uh, the, the lines pretty good. You can use acetone. Acetone is a little rough. Paint thinner is the least, uh, the most aggressive. And then I might have to scrape this. It's got like a lip on it. But you don't want that showing outside your new cover. So. so you guys, what we found is if you take a little razor blade like this, you can usually knock off uh, like old glue and stuff that won't come off with any uh, cleaners. Or like, you know, like I said, acetone, any of that stuff, lacquer thinner. Some of that stuff's a little aggressive. So, so we just take a scrape with a single edge razor blade around the edge. And that way it's all... Um, pretty like you see how it kind of pretty cleaned it up along here and I'll go over again with the lacquer thinner before we're done so now we're pushing this in to get make sure it's level and the holes will match up with the outside there you go like that hey see there's a little gap here so you could put a little bead on here not a problem just makes you push in really good when you do that and there are like eight four eight screws yeah push that in all the way real good okay Make sure that goes down all the way all more if you can. Okay. I like the drywall screws. They have push that in real good too. They have these other screws, but I personally like the drywall screws because they go in really good and they grab super good. Maybe switch sides over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and run a bead of silicone around on, I, to see these have the open edges so I wouldn't do it on that side I don't think it needs it because it's pretty pretty flush or there's some area but yeah rag and just clean it right off. Right then. See 
you can still see it playing the silicone it really good there. So now when you get the, the silicone done, you can see how clean it is. Just run your fingertip around it and wipe it off with a rag. You can also use paint, mostly lacquer thinner and clean it off. But it's, it's pretty nice when it's done and then your door will shut. Now, they make this so it has a little play in it so it matches up to your tube. So here, to close it up and match it up. I don't know why they have it done more accurate. But there you go, now it's on there and so everything works good. Nice and pretty, okay? That sounds like it's a winner.